Welcome to Real Gardens. Well, tomorrow is Midsummer's Day, but it's not in the middle of anything. This, to me, is the beginning of summer. It's full of light and hope and colour. This week, Anne-Marie is starting to turn Pat Wallace's palm collection into a garden. That's about right. That's about right. I'm trying out some unconventional planting techniques with a transplanted Londoner. And Carol is meeting a couple who've moved to Devon to live the good life. Adam Waterman was working at Huddersfield University when he met, married and moved in with Katie, who was a local solicitor, five years ago. Since then, they've been propagating like mad. First there was Poppy Anna, then Harmony, closely followed by two sons, Seth and Taris. Since he got married, Adam has become a passionate allotment gardener, with three plots just a hundred yards from their semi-detached cottage. In fact, sometimes he spends so much time there that it becomes a bone of contention with Katie. For the last sort of three years, he's been establishing the allotments, and as a consequence, the garden has ended up looking like a hideous wreck. Because I used to go in the garden, I used to do quite a lot of gardening. Um, because of the children being so young and me having to feed the children, etc., we haven't, I haven't had an opportunity we'd both, to We'd in. both like you to be more often in the garden. It's not just you, I would mm. like you more often in the garden, mm. part of the expression. But Adam would spend more time in the allotment. He's more interested in growing his vegetables than he is looking at flowers, really. I think that's the top and bottom. He doesn't really know his flowers as well, and that's always been a problem. <laughs> to appease Katie, Adam has recently concentrated on the front garden. He's put up trellis, installed a Wendy house for the children, and laid down decking. And all this while the builders have been adding an extension to the house. Did you lay this uh, decking yourself? I did, in the last three or four weeks. And why have you got a walking great windy house, almost as big as your own house? We've got limited space. It's so that the children can come straight from outside one house into their house. They don't have to run up the garden through the rain. What do you plan to do with the whole thing? Um, well, we're keeping this, say, this is the, the kids' area. Yeah. We're going to have a new bed come under the slide so the children can crash through the right. undergrowth. Up there. Can, we, can we come through yeah, sure. here? So this, uh, we're sliding down we're the sliding right way into the garden. Sliding down, down yeah. you come. What happens in this space here? This is going to be a grassy area surrounded by the planting. What sort of plants? Plants that would cope with the, the wind that we get here because the wind comes straight off the Pennines and hits this side. And how much say do you have in the layout of this? Oh, I've, well, I've had quite a bit of say this year because I did an experiment last year on the garden which turned out to be hideous. He put everything in pots, so this year I did have some input and I'm quite pleased with what he's done so far. It just needs to be a little bit more organised and perhaps we might get there. I do have a plan. In your have, pocket? Uh, in my pocket. Have you seen this? Have you all agreed all this? Uh, yes. Oh, it's very nice. Wendy House, decking, large boggy plants, slide, grass, and lilies in the corner. If we start moving things around yes. according to the plan, at least I can get an idea yes. of what it looks like. Even if, you know, you're then going to take weeks to plant it. But he likes it, too. <laughs> OK, fine. I'll, let's, let's move those lilies. Okay. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to be helping Adam to create a jungle playground in the front garden. But before finalising the design, it's always a good idea to move the plants about to see how they combine together in their new positions. Now, these squashes look good. I'm going to go along the, right. this, this trough. Okay. We can put these in if you want. If you, if you fancy it, we can put yeah, these in. Yeah, no trouble at yeah. all. I love planting. The squashes are a mixture of edible and ornamental varieties, which will scramble over the trellis and cover it in a dense foliage with large fruits hanging down over the tunnel. Right, you're going to need a lot of water on this, yes. aren't you? Are you going to yeah. mulch them or not? Yeah, I'll get some compost off the allotment. Talking of which, I really want to see your allotment. This is all fine and dandy, but I've been it's, dying it's, it's to go down me, there. Yeah. Yeah, well, you can come along, yeah. Can we? Yeah, okay, definitely, come on, yeah. let's go there. With a wife and four children who are all vegetarians, Adam is keen to produce 90% of the family's vegetables from his three allotments. He uses established organic methods with raised beds covered in agricultural paper. I either plant through the paper... Yeah. Um, ..or with potatoes, I'll plant underneath it. It's the whole thing organic, yeah? Yes, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. All raised beds, you never tread on them. Never tread on them. And you, you keep them covered by this paper mulch all year? Yes, it, it, will, it will last one season. Right. 
I'm curious to see how Adam makes one of his raised beds from scratch. So what's the process? You, you, you double dig that, do you? It was double dug two years ago. Each year, it's a question of putting a bit more compost on top and letting the worms do the job, not me. Well, let's start doing it. So yep. what's the first thing we need to do? We now? need to mark out the 12 before bed. All right, yep. OK. Now, how wide do you have your paths? It's about 18 inches. Well, I like the word about. It's about 18 inches. Is that good enough for you? That's good enough for me. You can be a bit too poncy, can't you? No, I can't. <laughs> I can't but... possibly be too poncy. <laughs> What do your neighbours think of all this, all the other allotment holders? Um, a little unconventional. You're a wacko? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wacko's good. <laughs> right. With the bed marked out, the topsoil from the paths can now be shoveled on. This might only raise the level by a couple of inches, but there is more compost to come. The paths are then finished off with lengths of permeable horticultural fabric to suppress the weeds, which in turn is covered with a layer of bark chippings. Adam has already cut the wooden planks that make up the sides of the bed so that they just need to be screwed together. With a length of leaky hose buried just below the surface, and this will be later connected to a water butt. This is really just composted manure, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but up here, the ground likes it. Because it's so relatively light? Yes, yeah. Right, and then the paper simply sits on there. And how do you fix it? All we do is lift the end of that bed that, the that whole caboodle? Yeah, yeah. OK. That will then and lower then that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then I'll do the same. Oh. OK. And then you just wiggle the bed. Now, are you convinced entirely by this paper? Mm. Yeah, I, I, it's a system I would not change. I might adapt as years go on, but I would do it every year now, yeah. So what are the virtues? It reflects light. It conserves moisture. Because it's watered underneath by pipe, it creates a drier atmosphere on top, so the slugs don't like it very much. It prevents weeds. It makes okay, me fair fun. enough. <laughs> OK, let's plant into that. Excellent. Right, these are two kales. Right. There's a... Um, let's Black see. Tuscan cabbage, that looks like. Yes, Have a look Cavallo there. Nero, yep. There's the Uncle Bert's purple, and then there's a Brussels sprouts. Now, do you know the difference between a Brussels sprout and a bogey? Go on. You can't get a spoiled boy to eat a Brussels sprout. <laughs> well, I could never have a no-dig system, apart from the fact that I don't think it works as well as digging. And I, you know, agree to differ with you yeah, on that. Yeah, yeah. I need to feel the soil. I need to dig it. I want that intimacy. I can feel how wet it is, how dry it is. How many times do you need to know your soil? Oh, daily. Daily? Oh, all the time. That looks good. Yep. Good start. To extend his growing season in the harsh Yorkshire climate, Adam recently lashed out £500 on a polytunnel. Oh, it's big, isn't it? Lovely, yes. Good for out the wind and out the rain. So you've got the same raised bed system. Yeah. I mean, it's as though you've put a bit of polythene over a piece of the allotment, isn't it? it? Conceptually, it's not a greenhouse. You grow as you would grow crops outside. Right, yeah. and you've got the same irrigation underneath, have you? Yeah, it just connects straight up to a water butt, yeah. Right. So what have you got in here? You've got... Well, a few onions. A few, yes. These are my Kelsey onions. First time I've grown from seed. And then you've got uh, peppers. Yeah, there. I've got peppers, aubergines, yeah. custom marrows, courgettes, lettuce, corn, carrots. Do you think you're going to have any problems with this variety of crops in inside there? here with humidity? I... Hello. You're encouraging to stay down here, aren't you? Well, it's lovely. I thought the whole idea were you helping in the garden, not in here. All right, we'll come back up. Good. <laughs> See, we were found. <laughs> Discovered. Pat Wallace is a London cabbie with a passion for tropical plants, but unfortunately, he's just broken his leg. This. Which means that his wife, Sandy, now has to do the hard labour in their small Islington garden, and it's currently chock-a-block with Pat's collection of palms and tree ferns. But Pat's stunning plants are not displayed to their best advantage. He's made the common mistake of stuffing his garden full of interesting plants, but without an overall plan. He needs Amory's help to turn the collection into a garden, even more so now that he's laid up. Well, I've got to ask, what have you done? I've done it while I was on the job. <laughs> yeah, like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was driving the cab and went to pick a passenger up. I fell up the top step, 
I took them to work, drove home and fainted. So it's definitely broken Oh, then. yes, very much so. <laughs> Oh, God, well, that's it then. You're not going to be doing any work, are you, for the rest of the summer? <laughs> I've got you stopping. here and I've got Sandy. Yes. I think that works. <laughs> that's going to be a nightmare. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> I'll sit in the chair and direct and you do the digging. We've got a lot well, of we ideas. do have to think about a design, don't we, really? Yes. Because although you've got all the plants, oh, they've kind of been chucked we in. We have got they? a design. We've got oh, a plan, right. yes. Oh, we? that's good, <laughs> isn't it? What I want to do is cut the shed in half. Well, Pat's ideas for the far end of the garden include a number of new design features. Oh, wow, that's nice, isn't it? Have you painted this? No, I wish I could. <laughs> Sandy wants a small terrace with a mosaic floor in the style of a Roman ruin. But first, we need to do some basic reorganisation. You see, for my money, there's far too many specimen plants just rammed in here. And you really can't see them, can you? I mean, it's just a strip of gorgeous palms. But they're all jostling for attention, aren't they? <laughs> and you can't see them. I mean, some of your favourite ones have just vanished, haven't they, here? Yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. But where are we going to move them to? Well, this side has got a lot of plants in I don't like. In a small garden, when something's not working like this, 120 quid, you've got to throw it away. <laughs> it's like a tail, isn't it, that? It's a waste of time, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it is. There's loads of plants that don't Same fit. Same as this as well. That, yeah. that doesn't really... I just like the flowers on it, but it don't soak. Yeah. We could strip out all the plants <laughs> that don't work in this garden. And there's quite a lot this side. What about that area there and around the back of the pond as well? Oh, I mean, yeah. there's space there, isn't there? Loved. Well, we could get some of the jelly palms over there. And there's that yucca there, so we're going to poke spike. our eyes that out and really, break our backs. Really spiky. You've got to be really careful with that one. But it's a good idea. Just organise it a bit better, eh? You're on. Yeah? yeah. We need women in this garden. <laughs> Gill power. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, then. Step one is to be ruthless about getting rid of some of the plants that don't fit into the tropical theme. Where's your wallet? In the bin. Good. Lovely. Pat's son Leon has turned up to help us with the painful job of cutting down the Italian cypress. Some of the plants are reluctant to be moved. We've got to get the stump out of this cypress tree. While others are surprisingly easy to get out. There you go, yeah. see? Yeah. Big girl like you. Look at that. You've a big girl. You'll be a big girl in a minute. You'll be in the pond. <laughs> We've got some space. <laughs> No, it's good, isn't it? Wow. And I think we should really hold on to that space that we've got now and start with small plants at the front here and then raise up in height and texture and colour. So we've got a big sweep of plants going up to the tracky carpus there. And I also think you should have a bend in it. Yeah. So that we can't see the back of the garden. Yeah, if we bend the path round so that it's a real sort of arc, so the whole garden isn't just here in your face as soon as you walk in, mm -hmm. you won't be able to see to the back. So it's two very simple things, but you'll be able to see things better. Sure. Ready? Ready? Lift it straight One, out. Two, straight. Three. Up. Now we can get on with thinning out the congested area to the right of the path. Yeah. This Mexican blue palm was completely hidden, but by moving it across the path, it can be displayed to its best advantage. That's about right, that's about right. Up. It's all right for you to say up. Not heavy, is it? We're also moving these jelly palms into a new, somewhat hazardous position on the far side of the pond. Uh, Liam, what's the spikes behind your back? Ready? Got it. Just watch them spikes, Liam. Now, with the jelly palms beautifully displayed on the edge of the pond, the final stage is to use some of the smaller plants to reshape the path. I think the pit of sporum here. I agree. It would be nice. I think we'll use the other two, but I'm not quite sure in what order. Uh, this canthus could go about quite tight there. Get a mix of the leaves. Yeah. What about and the waggy? And then the Zantidexia could go here and the waggy in between. How about out a little bit, because we're going to get a curve in the path, aren't we? Yeah. Nearly all of Pat's plants are in pots. This means lots of watering, but it makes it much easier to rearrange them. How about the lily? Zantidexia, definitely. And I'll tell you what, I wouldn't mind trying. There's a space. We could use something cycad. else. There's a cycad up there, like trying the ground. I've had that about ten years. That came from Tenerife. No way. So I think it's time it went Space in the ground. that out a bit. Now we're getting towards bendy. That's much better. Do you Lovely. Think? Ah, you're starting to get a garden now, Pat. Yeah, look, that looks really nice. I think we still need Space a bit more curve. there, isn't there? A bit more curve, that yeah. That Guadeloupe would really, really pick up yeah. that green, wouldn't it? That would, that would, yeah. Right, then. This Girl is lovely lifter. to watch. 
Oh! <laughs> well, you enjoy it. I am. I'm here really <laughs> enjoying it. So despite Pat's plaster cast, we've managed to make big changes to the garden. We've cleared out the inappropriate plants, displayed the others to their full advantage and reshaped the path to add just a touch of mystery to Pat's movable tropical garden. So what do you make of this? It's fab. So much better. Look at the light coming through. I just love the way you've got all these different textures and shapes and you've got all these supporters as well, yeah. really showing off the palms for what they are. Yeah. And I love this sweepy path here as well. It's nice, isn't Happy it? Day. Shall we try it out? Absolutely. Come on, girl. You lead the Come way. On. What a result, nice. he broke his leg, eh? <laughs> Absolutely. After the break, Carol Klein is with a couple who combine their gardening with looking after greedy sheep and affectionate goats. Chris and Bill Skeels are busy creating a brand new garden around their Devon house. They first got together in 1980 in South End in Essex, where Chris worked as a beautician and Bill was a heating engineer. We enjoyed what we were doing, we had a good life, um, just that we wanted something different. A lot of people think it's a wilderness, but it's not, it's just a beautiful place. At the moment, we feel like every day's been a holiday, don't we? Yeah. Seven years ago, they bought a pair of unmodernised cottages and several acres of land near Chumley, North Devon. At first, they dreamed of an idyllic rural existence. We came here thinking that we'd do the house up, didn't we? And we'd have a couple of little chickens and a goat and, you know, and we ended up being sheep farmers. And we haven't done the house up. <laughs> <laughs> Now that Chris and Bill have got to grips with looking after their animals, they've got more time to work on the garden. Bill does most of the building and Chris takes care of the plants. I became a gardener when I gave up smoking. I've got some seeds and these first little set of seeds went in the airing cupboard and they grew. And, and that was it, I was hooked. Over the past few years, they've made a lawn surrounded by trees and shrubs on the north side of the house. And recently, they started work on landscaping a more formal area on the south side, where they can sit out in the summer. With such a large area to fill, they need masses of plants. Carol Klein is here to help Chris raise her own. Oh, it's big, isn't it? It's huge, isn't it? So much to do. It's going to be a lot of hard work. Well, it's it? already been a lot yeah, of hard work. It looks like it. <laughs> we've had someone in and we've got a bit of a plan about this, and yeah. Bill's been working really hard doing it. I can see somebody else. <laughs> I love this change of levels. Yeah, the... this is really nice. Bill's just finished doing this. We had no idea it was going to be this nice. Beautiful. I'm thrilled with it. Bill hasn't stopped at the decking. Now he's busy making a plant propagator, a heated box for raised seeds and cuttings. What do you think of it? I think it's brilliant. It's absolutely wonderful. I've got one of these, but it doesn't look as posh as that. <laughs> This is only decking material that I've used, and I thought it looked pretty on the outside. What happens then? What do you want me well, to do? Well, we're going to lay this in the, in the bottom of the propagator to know. keep the damp away from the timber. If we could pin it round the sides. Has she never had one of these before? Chris, no, she takes them into the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Above the radiator in the bedroom. Yeah? Chris gets very excited about her, her seedlings. Does she really? So now she's going to have to get excited in the greenhouse That's right. instead. That's it. Now we're going to lay in two inches of sand. Right. Heavy, right. isn't it? Well, wow, very heavy. And it's hot. Do I get to play then? That's it. We play sandcastles now. <laughs> the bottom of the so box is, is filled with coarse sand, which will make a bedding layer for a soil warming cable. Right, that'll do one tick with a cable in there. Right, we'll put the cable in. This cable, which is thermostatically Oops. controlled, will give out a low heat, which will encourage seedlings to germinate and cuttings to form roots. Keeping approximately three inches apart. I don't know what three inches looks like. Well, that looks like six to me. <laughs> <laughs> I never was very good at uh, measurements, never mind. The cable is covered with another layer of sand, Seeds and cuttings will go into trays on top of this. No, it looks right for some cuttings, doesn't oh, it? it looks fine. Well, that's down to Chris. I've done my part. I've built yeah. the bench. Can I go and find her and leave you to tidy up? That'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Lovely. 
Bill's made you the most fantastic propagating frame. And I think we're duty bound to fill it up. Come to on, make Chris. lots of new plants for the garden, Carol and Chris are going to take cuttings from one of Chris's favourite shrubs in the border alongside the lawn on the other side of the house. This white cistus. You look at the new growth on this. This will make superb cuttings. First of all, your first thought is for the bush itself. So if you cut down there, you're leaving that bud there and you're not going to damage that growth that you've left behind. And then we can take two or three from that. You got your bag? I've got my bag. If not, they wilt, don't they? Yeah, they do. So I prefer this than going yeah. down the shops and buying them. Yeah. Mm. And we haven't taken anything that's got a flower head on it, have we? No, no, we don't want to. We don't want any flowering shoots at all if we can avoid it. How do you know now is the right time to take a cutting? Cistus work best from softwood cuttings, and right. that's just what this has got at the moment. Lots of sappy new growth that's very bendy. I think that's just about it. I think we're, we're in danger of denuding it otherwise, and we want to leave it some new growing shoots. Come and look at this. Oh! Oh. Do you think you'd make one for me? Gosh, he has been busy, hasn't he? Really posh. What kind of compost is this, Chris? It's a multi-purpose one, but it's peat-free. Great. So I'm, I'd like to try some things without peating. Yeah. So I thought I'd give this one a whirl. I'm all for that. And you've got a presser board too, have you? Yeah. There you yeah. are. Wonderful. So if you just cut underneath that second leaf node down, strip the basal leaves because otherwise they'll just sit and rot. So that's rot. the big leaves? Yeah, these big leaves that are just above that leaf node. Yeah. Yeah. And then nip the top out. Right. Why? Because if you don't, even if the, the cutting produces some roots, it'll just grow straight up. Um, so you'll just get one long tall shoot and what you're after is a bushy little plant. Right. So you always nip the top out of your cutting. Chris is using a hormone powder, which is supposed to stimulate the seedlings to form roots. I'm going to do a little experiment. Mm. I'm going to have half mm. a tray without hormone powder. Yeah. And then the other half, I'm going to have hormone powder. Right. And then afterwards, I shall see which ones come out best. Yeah, providing we remember which way around the tray is. Well, I might be trying. I always put no H on it. Oh, do you? I do, oh. yeah, because I've got such a short memory. Uh, and there's my label, no hormone and hormone. Great. Now, I think if we just top them off with some grit... I've not done this before, so what's the idea of this? Just to improve the drainage around the place where the cutting hits the compost. All right. All these cuttings will be ready for potting on individually this autumn. We'll have nice warm bottoms in there and they'll root in no time at all, hopefully. Well, I think that looks really pretty. It does. It's probably the prettiest cuttings I've ever took. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're going now, but next week we'll be back when anne is going to be paying her last visit to Mike and Alison in Stockport. Carol's going to cross the county and see Adrian and Debbie in South Devon. And I'm going over to the Channel Islands to see Liz in Guernsey. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.